Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Jack Perkins on the line. We are uh, tuning tonight's service. We thank God for all of you that are tuning in with us this evening. We are at home today as we are coming to you live from, not from the church, but from at home. So we would like to welcome those who are here uh, with me, my wife, and, and we thank God for her. And we thank God for you that have uh, visited in our home by way of Facebook Live and by conference call. We have uh, Dr. White on the line. Uh, good to see uh, my sister-in-law, Sister Annie Hollyquist, on the line watching also. Normally, on uh, a different time, but I'm not able to uh, uh, see who's on, but but now that I'm at home, I can see who joined in with us and watching. I pray that you been blessed by the word and blessed by your time uh, sharing with us. God has promised us that our labor is not in vain. Even though it becomes difficult at times to do what we try to do, we don't stop doing, we don't stop going, we don't stop doing what God has called us to do because we believe by faith that no matter what we do, God is with us. Good afternoon uh, to Annie, amen, family. Thank God for Sister Betty Smith is on. We, people are coming on and uh, they're tuning in to the service, but I pray that you've been blessed. The Lord has been, I've uh, been dealing with some things, and, and now I'm the first of the year, as I go before the Lord, I begin to ask him different uh, questions about different types of things, because uh, Jesus is the answer, and he has the answer to the question that we have. The Bible says, any man like wisdom, let him ask God, who's given liberally, and upbraid it's not. And we talked about a uh, thing that we need to have wisdom in. Amen. We talked about that uh, thing that we need to have wisdom in. And so tonight we're just going to start off by a word of prayer, hoping that everybody uh, join in and be part of this. And hopefully the people will get uh, in tune with it. And maybe others who are not here will, will, will be on soon. But we are coming to you from my personal Facebook, which is uh, Pastor Jack Perkins. And I pray you pass it on if somebody calls you and asks you about that. I let them know that we are on and we are ready to get into the Word. But let's have a word of prayer at this particular point in time. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Father, we pray right now that you bless us indeed, that you would uh, expand your kingdom and our part in it. Keep your hand upon us. Keep us from evil. Help us not to cause any harm, but make us a blessing in the night. Father, you know our needs before we ask you. We are praying right now for the concerns of those who may be at home sick. We are praying for Mother White, who is on the line with us tonight. We are praying for Sister Andrew Crusett. We are praying for Sister Joy Borum. We are praying for Mother Tinsley. We are praying right now that you just remember, Lord God, all the families of our church. We remember this world. We remember our leaders. Lord God, you said for us to pray for them. Father, we pray that you Bless them with the wisdom that they need. We thank you for everybody that you put in our lives that's become a part. Thank you for everybody who will be on the night, that are on the night. We pray that you just have your way. We give your name to praise, the honor and glory, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. It's good to be back with you. I was speaking on Sunday about uh, in the beginning was the word. And I thank God for the word of God. Good to see Sister Carolyn about the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And this thing said, it was with God, and it was God. That's, we thank God that Jesus was back in the beginning. And it said the same was in the beginning with God. He was there from the beginning. He, did, he started from the beginning. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for witness, to bear witness of the light, 
that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was set to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man path, every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which was born not of blood, not the will of the flesh, not the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bear witness of him, and Christ said, This was he of whom I spake, he that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have we all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So the, the contrast here in the 17th verse is the law was given by Moses. The Bible talks about here, and it says uh, in verse 1 that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was, was, was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. And so basically, it's, it's sharing that. Then in the 14th verse, and, and the Word was, was made flesh and dwelt among us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That was in the beginning. But then the Word became flesh, was made flesh, verse 14, made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld in his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, for the law was given in the verse 17 by, by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. That's what we're going to talk about a little bit tonight, because many many things that we uh, read read in the in the Old Testament, and we understand and our understanding of God uh, it is it changes with Jesus. What Jesus said, uh, people believe that God was the God of Abraham, that God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and not necessarily the God of. Uh, uh, not just necessarily the God of of the world. The scripture we're reading from is John, First John, Saint John, chapter one, verse one through seventeen. That's what we are talking from. First John, chapter one, verses one through Saint John, chapter one, verses one through seventeen. Uh, that's uh, we're coming from that scripture tonight, and we're talking about the issue about the seventeen verse. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. One of the things that we've been dealing with is, uh, uh, and everybody's on everybody's mind, fresh on everybody's mind. And, I, and I, as I read different texts, uh, I read different writings of people, what's happening in this time. And we have to be careful what we say and do in these times, you know, when it relate to, and everything has to line up with the word, with, with the word of God. And that's what we try to focus on. I can, you can hear a lot of things, but it doesn't line up with the word today. So there's a distinct difference between the law of Moses and the grace and truth that came by Jesus Christ. One of the things that we, we have to not be so quick to condemn people because people are sick, everybody. People are getting sick all over the world. Uh, Christians are being sick, uh, getting sick babies. I was thinking about when, when we think that God is, is, is uh, doing this to us, then we have to think about the young girl, one of the youngest people that I know of that died from uh, coronavirus. Her name was Skylar. She went over to Metropolitan Church. Remember the little child? She was six years of age. 
six years of age, and for us to believe that God sent this plague, uh, this this disease, to take her out. That goes against the nature of God. The Bible tells us that God is love. God is love. He sent Jesus into the world. Uh, Paul said to save sinners, and all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, so uh, I was reading a message, and I talked about the scripture uh, in the 13th chapter of the book of Luke, where the people that come to Jesus, and they ask him a question about the people who had died, the people who had died. Uh, the 13th chapter of Luke, it says, that was present at that season, some that told them of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffer such things. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So when I look at this text, uh, sometimes he, the, he answers the question that's not asked. God, are you doing this? Uh, uh, or what's happening right now? And I read a, a story, I read a, a story about Charles Spurgeon. He was a speaker back in the 16th century, and he talks about some things, you the same thing, some things are accident and not punishment. Uh, things are set to punish evildoers are not going to be sent to punish the saints. So we have to look at it from the standpoint, would God punish the saints as well as the sinners at the same time? That does not have any biblical validity for this particular day because Jesus, uh, he came and he brought, according to the 17th uh, verse of St. John, uh, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth. And it says that the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us to deny an ungodliness and worldly lust. We shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of that great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, in this text where we're reading in the 16th, that 13th chapter, we see that Jesus said to the people, you think they were greater sinners than others. You know, there are times, if you go back in, and, and someone will make the argument, well, we, we are killing babies. Yeah, they was killing babies when Jesus was born. But there was no vendetta that went out against the people that kill all of those babies, and we think about all those babies and that. We live in a fallen world and fallen man, and all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He does not necessarily interfere in all of our dealings. There are room for accidents. I was thinking about all the people that are stranded on the highway. And, and 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 the snow came. We live in an environment where the the weather is changing through global warming or the, just the change in the weather. We there are so many things we depend on and we trust in. And so when something goes wrong, we so sometimes people are so quick to blame God. I had I thank God for saving me from blaming God for the stuff that was happening. Uh, during my time, that happened to our people, and, and until the Lord saved me, and I recognized it was not God; it's people doing stuff. And so they go back to this this virus we're talking about. Uh, they traced it. The president of our nation, they they traced it over there in China. Somebody mess around when people mess around with stuff they're not supposed to be messing around with in a laboratory and they accidentally catch something and then they spread it and it began to spread. And it's, we are living in a time now where people can be in 
in China in one day and over somewhere else in another day, and they found out that the, the virus that had come here basically did not come directly from China, but it came over here from London and in that, that area to the United States. So when people are trying to find something to blame or someone to blame, and many times we will we, we'll, we'll blame God for stuff. So say, well, God is there. Why didn't he do something? I was looking at the governor uh, in Virginia, the people that were stranded on the expressway, 95. And they were saying they were stranded there for 27 hours. And they were saying, they were saying to the, uh, the governor that, they, why didn't y'all do something? Why didn't? So they had no way. These people are not gods. Uh, Trump is not God. And Biden is not God. And this is the time we need to be praying and asking God, how to, can he help us with some of the problems that we solve? The problem that we're facing on the earth is not necessary. Like the spread of this virus is not because there is not ways to help us. People are dying, the Bible said, because of the light of knowledge. They the, the, the refuse to, to hear. Having ears, they hear. They hear not. They see not. And so they can't make people go get something to help them. Right? If your house is burning down, you need to learn how to get out the house. So Jesus talked about I tell you, Nate, but except you repent, you shall all likewise pray. We do know that the world is in a bad condition. We do know that the world is lost. We do know that people are sinning. But Paul says, I desire, my desire for Israel is that they be saved. That's what we need to focus on, is that people today need to be saved. It's a great opportunity not to try to blame the government, not trying to blame. We have a part to play. When stuff happens, we need to know what to do. One of the things Jesus said, we need to repent. If we are not doing the right thing, it's an opportunity to ask those questions. Not what God is doing. What we need to do is repent. Jesus said, I tell you, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. What God is doing is making sure we know what to do. That's grace. When Jesus tells us, this is grace, not only saves us, but it helps us know what we need to do. We need to repent. We need to change our mind. We need to change our heart. We need to change our lifestyle. Why? Because God loves us. We don't just need to repent because he's mad at us. You know, it's, it's hard to think that people think that God is mad at them. That would be the baddest, saddest thing, God, you, that God is just mad at the world. That's why I like John 3, 16. Jesus tells Nicodemus, who was the ruler of the Jews, he tells him, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. People blame God for just about everything. They don't need to blame God for everything. They have to take responsibility for our action. Man is a free moral agent. He makes decisions, and man makes mistakes. You know, many times I've done things and I've asked, well, Lord, why didn't you stop that? And he'd tell me. I remember one time he said to me, I was asking the Lord about, Lord, help me with my bills. I, uh, these bills, and he turned around and said, you, you, you did that. It's kind of like when people make a mess. You, you made that mess. Now, I will, give you, I will help you to clean it up, but I need you to understand who made this mess. We need to stop blaming God for what he's not doing. And, and, and people that say that, well, you know, I got this revelation from God that this is what he's doing. And it's all over the Internet and places like that. Well, the world is coming in. They were predicting that when Barack Obama got to be president, that the world was going in. I had people say to me, the reason why that it's going in because 
he supports abortion. They was aborting babies before he ever got there. They was aborting babies before Roe versus Wade. People, and, and I say this to people, you may not, they, when I say this, it gets heavy. Some of y'all have, have practiced your own birth control, so you didn't have a baby, you, you determine how many babies you're going to have. Now that's going to hit somebody across the head because you decided with your body that you wasn't going to have no more, and so God forgave you for that, right? So if you can get forgiveness, other people can also get forgiven. That's what we need to preach about, the love of Christ, about how good God is, how much he loves us all, and that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God and thank God that we got forgiveness. Don't be trying to make it as though that we ain't never done nothing wrong. That's what I was teaching in one of the lessons I was preaching, and so I like to sit down and, and just go to the scriptures and share with you what the Bible tells us. In Titus chapter 3, verses 1, Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers and to obey magistrates and to be ready to every good work. Paul was talking to Titus. He said, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers and to obey magistrates and to be ready to every good work. I know we rationed not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the doctors of the world. Apostle Paul wrote that to the future church. But then he tells us in Titus, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and the powers and to obey magistrates and to be ready to every good work. And so, and then it said to speak evil of no man. Speak evil. So this, this put a check. Sometimes God has to put a check on us. So, so that means that, that I have to stop speaking evil. When, when, when I'm speaking evil, speaking evil of a person and, and just making them totally evil, they may just be totally ignorant. I believe that there are some people who are ignorant of God's righteousness and the Bible says they go about to establish righteousness of their own. Every man's way is right in his own eyes. To speak evil of no man, to be no brawler, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. It doesn't give us a right to, to put people down. It doesn't give us a right to kick them to the curb. It doesn't give us a right to, to do what we do. Because verse 3, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, Disobedient, deceived, serving devil lust, devil lust, and pleasure, living in malice, envy, hateful, and hating one another. But after the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward men appeared. This is what I want you to get. Jesus was full of grace, but after the kindness of the love of God, our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Jesus tells us in Matthew, judge not for the same judgment we judge, we shall be judged. I pray you're getting something out of this. But after the kindness, listen, this is what Jesus said, after the kindness, and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. I'm glad Jesus showed up. I'm glad Jesus showed up. He was full of grace and truth. The Bible says in John, uh, St. John chapter 3, St. John chapter 3, and uh, you can go there. The Bible says, but uh, whosoever believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting, have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not 
is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. Jesus Christ, he was man and God. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. He was in all points tempted, even as we are, yet without sin. But I love this in Titus because it's a, but after the kindness and the love of God, our Savior toward man appeared. God, the kindness and the love and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared. That's why he appeared because God loves us. That's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that God loves us. And he's appeared among man. He's appeared among, and he's given us the ministry, according to Corinthians, a reconciliation that man should be reconciled to God. He did not send his son into this world to condemn it. He sent him here to save it. And that, that's why we are saved. But I love this. But after the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared. I'm so glad it appeared that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. It appeared to me January the 8th, 1968. I experienced the kindness and love of God our Savior toward me. Amen. So if he had that love for me that particular day, if you understood the condition of my mind, the condition of my heart. The night I needed to be saved, it was by the grace of God. It was not no act of illumination in my mind that this was, but because he loved me, he revealed himself through the preaching of the word. I, I heard and I got faith and I put my trust in him and I've been living for him for many, many years. But this is what it's about. Not by works of righteousness, which we've done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. I'm glad that God had mercy on me. And I want him to continue to, to have mercy. I just pray for mercy. I pray for mercy that people may receive the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, toward man. I'm praying for, for the people uh, under these magistrates that you tell us that we need to be, be subject to them. If they tell you you need to go do something, you need to do it and, and power. They said, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and to power and to obey magistrates and to be ready to every good work. We don't want to do that. We, we just said, well, well, I ain't going to pay no more attention to them because what, what the Bible, what you going to pick up half the Bible and do half of what it said? It said, be subject to principalities and powers and to obey magistrates. Now we wrestle against them. We got things against them. But God put them there for a purpose. The reason why we have people like that, they are able to marshal different people together to bring about a, a, a benefit for the people in the United States. That's why we have elections and people go and vote and they vote their opinion. God is not saying that man is sanctified because no man is saved by God all in all, it's by the grace of God that we are saved. Not of ourselves, it's the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And so we boasted in our, our salvation. We boasted in that we are saved. That is fine. Don't be so quick to condemn folk. Don't be so, so quick to speak evil. Don't be so quick to open our mouth. Why? If God didn't tell us to say, sometimes we have to ask him, forgive us our debts. When I read this, I said, Lord, I've been looking at this. I've been saying stuff. Now, you surpass, but see, if you don't repent, you'll perish. <laughs> we all have to change our mindset. We have to repent. Quit, quit being so quick to judge us. Quit being so quick to sit in the hell. What if the Lord what if I didn't have a mother? I'm going I'm to share this with people that did, did, did make me go, didn't make me go to church. <laughs> didn't have no option. 
What if my mother would have said, Jack, you don't want to go stay at home. But the Bible said where two or three or seven of them together in my name, I'll be in a mess. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 18. Amen. I want you to, I want you to stick. They say they put a pin in that. After I go off the air, put a pin in Titus chapter 3. Put a pin. I'm going to come right back to it. But put a pin on that. Put that. Remind. We're going to come back to this. And you ought to be able to go back into the Word and see what the Word says. Amen? Matthew. Say Matthew. That's why I love my Bible. That's why grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. And Jesus is talking. Amen? <laughs> when, when Jesus is talking, and I'm listening real good. I'm, I'm listening, but when Jesus is talking, I'm listening very good. And the Bible says, and uh, well, let's let's start. You know, I, I don't like to start too far. You know, it talks about the the lost sheep, uh, uh, the lost cords, things of that nature. God is concerned about the lost sheep. Amen. Uh, how think we if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray, does he not leave the ninety nine? And goes into the mountains and seeks that which is gone astray. That's in verse 12. And if so be that he find it, verily he said to you, he rejoices more that of that sheep that are the ninety-nine and nine which went not astray. Even so it is not the will of your father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. It's not the will of God. In heaven, that not one of these little ones should perish. Isn't it powerful to know that God is not concerned about us perishing? God is not concerned about people going. The judgment is going to be at the end of the world. And right now, in this period and in this space of grace, and if we're going to talk about anything, we ought to talk about grace and truth that come through Jesus Christ, that he loves us right now. That he loved us. He was not willing for one sheep to go astray. Well, why would you think that he would be not concerned about all of these people that die? He is. Those who, who die in the Lord from the absence from the body be present with the Lord. The rest of the folks, I pray that somebody, some way, somehow, I'm not praying that everybody go to hell so I, I be right. I want, to be, I want to be right so I can go to heaven. And that means I have to have a right spirit about stuff, right thought. I shouldn't be so happy and, and so bold in my assessment of it that, that I don't have no mercy and don't realize what the Bible says. I told you, going right back to Titus. Verse 4, that love. But after the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared. It just showed up on the scene. People thought God was just mad at everybody. He got to kill everybody. I mean, if you don't do something, I'm going to zap you and do all this, this stuff to you. That's not the God that I serve. I serve a loving Savior. I serve a gentle Savior. He said unto the people, come unto me, all you that labor and I have a labor. Who want to go to the hands of a person that just smacked them over the head? Who want to serve a God that just make you do that? Through loving kindness have I drawn you. It's the goodness of God that leads man to repent. God has been so good to us that it ought to lead a person. If you're on this line, it ought to lead you to repent. God is saying right now, repent. Change your ways that you are you all, all of us are going to die. All of us are going to die. But how we die. I love this second, fifth verse. But not by works of righteousness which we've done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of generations and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. 
This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou art firm confident that they which believe in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. When I say by works of righteousness, but if we maintain good works, these things are good and profitable unto men. Bible said, blessed the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, not standing in the way of the sinners, not sitting in the seat of God. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law, that we meditate day and night. What we need to understand that God, rather than sending plagues, he sent Jesus. And when Jesus went back and sat down, he sent the Holy Ghost. And that's what's at work in the earth today. And we need to work with him that every person that we know need to be saved. Don't be trying to label people like they can that well they gonna go to hell because they not doing this now they not doing that right now they the, that was a time that, that back there for we ourselves were sometimes foolish I knew I was foolish maybe y'all didn't know you were foolish but I knew I was foolish I was disobedient the Bible said and everybody been disobedient at some time and sometimes we find ourselves Outside, So every time you get up, okay, come back. When it said repent, we need to repent if we've been saved for a long time. We need to repent of that spirit we have. We don't just get a, 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 a just a blanket ticket from the beginning to the end. And so I got saved in 1944. I went to church, got baptized. They wet me up. They dried me off. But did you maintain good work? It said that we might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. These things are, God is, is here for our good. He's not here to destroy us. Peter says that to us. He tells us, and, and, and Peter said, uh, people say, well, why don't he come right now? We've got a lot of folks that's not saved. We're trying to get them saved, trying to live right so they can be saved. We pray for them to be saved. We talk to them to be saved. We want them to be saved. Hey, come on and get, come on into the house. Hey, come on into the covering of the Lord. Come on into the presence of God. Matthew 18. And I go back over there. It says, Moreover, thy brother trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault. Between thee and him alone, if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, and in the mouth of two witnesses, every word may be accepted. And if he neglect to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let it be unto you as a heathen man and a publican. This is what Jesus said. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Gathered together in the name, there I am in the midst of them. I stand on the word of God. That's the promise of God. That where two or three will assemble themselves together in my name. The Bible said in Hebrew, forsake not to assemble yourself together as the sake of Psalm is. You know, and I know we do things because, of, and I'm not trying to condemn people to try to get people to, to get in the place that they need to be, but our reason has to be the right. If that's your right reason, you have every right to believe that way because everybody's faith is not based on it. But I base my faith on this. He said, Lo, I'm with you always to the end of the world. I base my faith in the prayer of Jesus. The promise, the prayer, and also in his presence. His presence is there that I, I know I'm safe. I can, if God, if I know the Lord is with me, you know, I wouldn't even be here if I, I thought the Lord wasn't going to be with me. 
Moses said to God, if you if you gonna send me there, if you ain't going, I, I don't want to go. I don't want to go, but I know the Lord is with me. Amen. Because he told me it's time for me to get moving. And that didn't mean he moved away from where I was at, but I was in the place that he wanted me to go. Uh, he wanted me somewhere else, and so therefore I'm here. So the Bible says, the void foolish question. What is a foolish question? A question you can't answer, a question you don't have the facts on, and quit trying to answer foolish questions. We just need to say at some point in time, I really don't know what's going on. But if they tell you what happened, then they'll try to put another spin on it. There are some people, every time something bad happened to another individual, they say, God did that. People can fall like the Good Samaritan. The, 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 the man fell among thieves. The Bible, Jesus said, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Even in the Bible, back in the day when I thought about this, when we think about this, when Job's problem came up, it was not from God. The devil sent forth those flags against the devil killed his children. What, good, what, what sane-minded person would believe that Jesus just killed? Well, he just allowed you little accident, and so God took my baby. God, God, you were in an accident. You, you were in an accident. So don't blame God for everything that happened. The world is blaming God. Well, why don't God, if that was God, why don't he do something about this? My question to them is why don't you repent? <laughs> why don't you repent? Amen? Repent. Lord, why, why did this happen? It's a good opportunity right now for the world to repent. And the world needs to come to repentance before God. Why? Because the world is in a state of sin. And it's a good time for us to preach repentance toward God, faith toward God, and repentance. Change our ways, change our actions, change if there's any wicked way, and then ask the Lord to search you through the Holy Spirit, and if there be any wicked way within me, I need you to help me. And we go through this period of time of fasting and talk about seeking God. I'm, I'm just seeking, I'm seeking for this truth. Jesus is full of grace and truth. Everything we hear is not true. There's a difference between uh, between what we think sometimes and truth. What we believe sometimes and truth. Jesus was full of grace and truth. His disciples were not always full of truth. But Jesus didn't go off to truth because they didn't have truth. It's our job to get you the truth. God loves us. God loves us. The, the John said, God is love. How can a loving person have a fit on us? God ain't having no fits on us and getting upset with us and trying to trying to kill us and trying to kill you. And we blame him. He didn't put you in the car. And if your car ran off the road in the ditch, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't dig the ditch. Man did it. Put the blame where it's supposed to avoid foolish questions and avoid foolish answers. And answer. We got to give an account of the deeds that are done in our bodies and the thing that we are saying out of our mouth. I mean, people get a scripture out of them uh, from anywhere and they, they are use it as an excuse to do or say what they want to, and they be bold in it and be as wrong as two left shoes. But the two left shoes, no, they they two left shoes. But it's, if a left shoe's supposed to be, it, it is, don't, don't feel right. And striving about the law, striving about the law. Back in the Old Testament, I went back, I had to go to, back over in, in Leviticus, and I'm over there reading, then I get over there and and, and people are, when, when I say that, you know, men, I don't eat pork, I don't eat any of that, and stuff like this. 
But I can't go over into the law, in the book of the law, and, and get my justification and try to use that to condemn folks. I can't do that. Why I just eat what I eat, and you eat what you eat. I mean, I mean, and, 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 and that's just fine. But if you go back into the book of the law, in that 11th chapter, it talks about clean and unclean meats. I mean, if you're going to go back into, into that clean and unclean fowls, uh, water creatures and all this stuff, and how people become unclean and, and creeping things, and how people supposed to sanctify themselves and all that stuff, they had so much stuff back there at that time. If you got picked up a couple of sticks on a on a Sabbath day, and the Sabbath, uh, the Jewish Sabbath was on a Saturday, that's what they say, and the different offering, the uh, Abram's first offering, the sin offering, the offering of the people, the priest uh, not to drink wine, and, and, and all these things, the priest's garments uh, had to be not the wave offering, and the burnt offering, and, and the sin offering, and the priest offering, and the priest giving a portion, and, and eating the fat of blood, uh, forbidden and unacceptable offerings and all kinds of laws. And I'm glad that Jesus came with grace and truth. I mean, I don't hate pig and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I, I mean, eating all of this stuff, the contentions and, and striving about the law. For they are unprofitable and vain. They it ain't going to do nobody any good. A man that is here say, after the first and second evidence, reject, knowing that he that is such is subject to the verdict and sin is being condemned of himself. That's what the Bible says. And so when we look at what the Bible says, people are talking, and they're going back in, the, they, they go back and take bits and pieces of the law. Back over in that book, it talks about what you're supposed to do with slaves and stuff. That's why I didn't like the old tale. When you can have a slave because we came out of a history. I would never. Was, I don't know anybody the person in my family was a slave, but I do know that in America, people they subjected people for years. And if God was going to kill us all off, it'd have been a good time to do it back then. I mean, when when they when they was out there uh, selling people, selling. Uh, men and women and killing them, beating them like they like they less than an animal. They didn't beat animals like they beat men back at that time. But I thank God that the the kindness and the love of our God, our Savior toward man appeared. I that somebody really loved me, somebody really cared about me, somebody was concerned about me, somebody that had me on his mind, somebody that came down to look beyond my faults and see my needs. Somebody who loved me when I was even unloved and angry and upset and sad about everything. I'm so glad for Jesus. Jesus Christ, uh, he came, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The, the fact that Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. You remember the story about the woman who caught in the very act of adultery? I mean, they said, according to Moses' law, she's supposed to be stoned. What do you say we're supposed to do with her? He started writing on the ground, and pretty soon the people started leaving. They started leaving. He said, the one without sin casts the first stone. All of them, all of, they had to have sin because he hadn't taken them away. <laughs> they had religion but they were still in sin. There was no delivered from sin except through Jesus. Grace and truth. I preached a message one time, Jesus to the rescue. What the law could not do according to the writing, that Christ, because, because he was weak through the flesh, Christ, what the, what, what the, the blood of the, la the lamb, the sheep and the goat couldn't do, what the blood of the pigeon couldn't do, even though they sprinkled it on the altar, it could not take away the conscience. Of, it could not break sin back. And, and in Romans chapter 5, we talk about our, all this sin in this world. I'm glad the grace and truth came from Jesus Christ. And then he gave it, he distributed it out to his, his people that 
that was preaching and teaching. And I thank God for the Pastor Paul as he writes uh, in his writing about the grace of God. And God even had to tell him, my grace is sufficient for you. Even though he was talking about grace, he needed grace. I, and I talk about grace tonight. I need grace. I know how to repent. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, Five, four, and by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. See, it's no big deal that, that this, this stuff is passing because we got folks that won't wear a mask. We got folks that won't go with no shot. We got folks who still congregate. We have people doing all the things that they're doing. And God don't have to do it. He said, by, as by one man, sin entered into the world. God was not the originator of sin. Man brought it into the world. God is not the originator of this disease. Man over there somewhere messing around with stuff they ain't got no business messing with. And they come. God is not the one who's putting the fire out there in California. See, people don't want God until they want something blown out. Well, why don't he blow it out? Well, since you want to run your own life, I'll let you run it. But I by one man sin entered the world and death by sin, so that death passed to all men, for then all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world. For until the law, sin was in the world. But if sin is not imputed, where well, there is no law. Therefore, a lot of stuff that Abraham them did back in the day, there was no law. The Bible said the law was our schoolmaster to show everybody knew it was wrong, but we didn't have any mandate from God was wrong. That makes sense. That there was no authority. So everybody was a law to themselves. Whatever they did, where there's no law, there is no sin imputed. Verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam, transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, hath abound unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is a gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by man, one man offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and are the gift of the righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. The free gift came upon all men unto justification. For as by one man disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law is that the offense might abound, but where sin abound, grace did much more abound. That as sin had reigned in the death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. I mean, this is this is this this stuff is so good. I mean, it's so good to me. I, I I feel so excited about this. Where well, sin abound, as bad as it was, as bad as it get, grace does much more abound. If you can just get people to repent and see, there is grace available for you. There's grace available to you. You can have the grace of God. You can be saved today. God can look at your past as though your past and give you a brand new future. Grace is much more about. We talk how bad things are. There have been 
other times it's been bad before. In historical times, it's been bad before. But now God is calling for men everywhere. There was a time God winked at our ignorance, but now he calls everybody everywhere to repent. Peter said, judgment must first begin at the house of God. Some of the people that need to repent are, are, are sitting up in the houses and and, and, and looking down their nose on people that supposed to be, they supposed to be witnessing to. And rather than trying to get these people saved, we're trying to, to talk about how bad they are. The people that, even the people that refuse to wear the mask, that refuse to get the shot, I'm praying for their salvation. If you don't have Jesus, you can have a mask. You don't have Jesus. You can have the shot, every shot in the world. They can give you 10 shots. But I pray that they give you space of time to repent. I love that. The Bible talks about the grace of God. In Titus chapter 2, verse 11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation. The grace of God. The law brought condemnation, but the grace of God brings salvation. That bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and world of love. We shall live soberly. Showing us how to live. Because grace comes, we just don't live any kind of way. If you repent, you don't have to be drunk. Righteously and godly in this present world. Wait, right here, right now. Right here today, right now. And if we have sin in our life, we can repent of it and ask, Lord, Lord, forgive me, I'm a sin. Jesus told the people, repent. The first message he preached was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He don't want to throw the kingdom before us and show us his glory and then go back to glory and sit down and we don't get no glory. The Bible said that he was full of grace. We beheld his glory full of grace and truth. Full of grace. Full of Jesus was full of it. The woman caught him the very act of adultery. He rolled on the ground and he turned and all the people had left. He said, now where are your accusers? He said, I have none. He said, neither do I accuse you. Because he didn't come here to accuse her. He didn't come here to condemn her. He didn't come here to accuse you. He already knows who you are, but he knows what you need to do, and that is to repent. That is to ask God to forgive you. That is to ask God to give you the power, the Bible, and then we receive him as your Lord and Savior. Because in the first chapter, it talks about verse 12. It said, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the Son of God. Not to just the Jew, not just to the white, not just to the black, not just to the Chinese, the Japanese, uh, whatever kind of East they were. It's to everyone that received him, that him gave he power to become the Son of God. Before I met Jesus, I was just a, just a powerless person, just walking around, didn't have control of my, my emotions, didn't have control of my spirit, didn't have control of anything. But when Jesus came in, he gave me power. He saved my soul. He, he changed my life. He had to do it. I couldn't do it. There was not enough good in me to do to be saved. You can't work your way to salvation. You have to be saved by grace through faith. It's not of yourself. It's the gift of God. Not a works less any man should boost. Boastedness. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Got a lot of scriptures tonight. I hope you're getting it tonight. It's time to repent. It's time to tell people, now God ain't mad at you. God ain't trying to kill you. You... We are walking in disagreement with God and these things are happening. See, sometimes we have to come under protection of the Lord. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. That's, that's back there. And I believe that if you walk with the Lord in the light of his word and you, you, you know, what, no matter what happened, he's going to care for us. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 says, And ye hath he quickened, who are dead in trespasses and in sin. You hath he quickened, who were dead in 
trespasses and sin. Where in time past you walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power there, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, of whom also we all had our come. We all had our covenant. We all had our man alive in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he may show the seeding richness of his grace and his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. We talked about that kindness in Titus. The kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself is the gift of God. The Bible said the ways of the sin and death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And we need to be telling people God wants you to have that gift. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to know Jesus. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be in his family. He wants the best for you. He want to help you. He want to bless you. Oh, so many wonderful things about Jesus that I know. That the song said, he's sweet, I know. Dark cloud may rise, the storm may he, he, We see the kindness. We, we see in here the kindness of the Lord. The, the kindness. Oh, I'm talking about the kindness of the Lord because he's so kind to us. He was so gentle that a leprous man came to him one day and said, If thou will, thou can make me clean. Leprosy, and then people represent, it recognize the things that's untouchable. Some people that, 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 that they're caught up in sickness and things like that. Sometimes we try to blame people for being sick as though They've done some evil things. And Jesus came with the truth. You don't have to do nothing to be blind. You don't have to do nothing to be sick. I told you about Job. The devil going back and forth through the earth. There's a devil in the earth. And Jesus came and tells us about the truth. The thief coming. See, I'm the door. If you come in through me, you can go in and out and find pastor. But the thief coming not but to steal, to kill. But I have come that you may have life that you may have it more abundantly. If you don't come to Jesus, the thief is still coming. The only way we have, hope we have, is to be in Jesus. The scripture says, in him I live, I move, and I have my being. I thank God. I pray that tonight, the grace and truth that come through Jesus Christ, it, it is through Jesus that we live. It is in him we live. It is in him we move. It is in him we have our bed. It's not in the law. Amen. It is not in Peter, James, and John. It's in him that we live. He is the Christ. He's the son of the living God. Peter tells us he's not willing that any should perish, but that all of us come to repentance. He don't want us to die. He don't want nobody to go to hell. He's not into that. He's a loving God. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all your land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come in for his presence and say, know ye the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are the people, the chief of the power. Enter his gate with thanksgiving, and endure his cause of praise. Be thankful to him, and bless his name. Why? Because the Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Bible says, God is the son and a shield. He's a son to give us light. He's a shield to protect us. No good thing will he withhold from them <coughs> that walk is upright. I pray you got something out of this tonight. I pray tonight if you're not saved, I want you to know good news we got. 
that grace and truth. The grace is this. He looks beyond. He see, He knows our needs. He knows the sin that we committed. All he asks us to do is repent. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. The word is not the even on our mouth. The word of faith which we preach. That if thou would confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth on the righteous, with the mouth confession is made in the Sabbath. I want you to understand that Jesus loves you. That the song says, Yes, Jesus loves me. Love me. Love me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Thank you for watching tonight. It's the grace of God. It's the grace of God. I thank God that I receive the abundance of God's grace. I pray you've been blessed tonight. I pray that you are saved tonight. If you're not saved, I pray you invite Jesus now. So Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, come into my life. I need a Savior. And I thank God that I heard that you were saved. If you were there, and you heard what I said. From the heart of God, through the Holy Spirit, to my heart, he put love in my heart for you. And my desire for you, if you're listening to me tonight, that I love you and I want to see you uh, have a relationship with God. You just uh, a word away. Say, Lord, forgive me. I've sinned. I don't want to be like this. Save me in the name of Jesus. See, see sometimes people say, I can't turn around. If you turn your heart toward the Lord, you've already turned around. If you turn to Jesus, you've already turned around. And I pray tonight that you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. What am I going to get out of this? The joy of the Lord. To know that I, I was able to share with you that I came on this truth. I got this grace from God and I ran up on this truth that God is love, that he loves us. He commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When he was dying on the cross, this is what grace does. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. When I read that, I get excited. When I read that, I know God loves me. But I also know that God loves you also. So until next time, be safe. Take care of yourself. Uh, obey the magistrates. If they tell you you need to, the, what they tell you what to do, do it. That's what the Bible says. Uh, they, they're over you. If they recommend stuff, we are under this. The Bible tells us we supposed to honor them. I know we wrestle with them, but they have benefit to us. That God uses them to help us so that we may be able to help them. Did you know that God sent people to you that's in power? Don't be intimidated by their power. Because God gave you power to become the son and daughters of God. I love y'all. I'm praying for you. I pray every day. This is a season to seek the Lord like you never thought. This is a season for you to get to know him. If you pray, just pray with me right now. Father, I thank you for this night. I thank you that Jesus came with grace and truth. I thank you that grace is available for me tonight. That you can look beyond my faults and you can see my need. I pray that you come into my heart. I open my life to you. I know you knocking at my door and I want to let you in. Will you forgive me my sin? And if you do that, if you come in, 
you my Lord and my Savior. If you pray that prayer, you're now saved uh, and ask God, ask God, believe it, that he saved you. He said, any person come in, he would not put you out. Trust him now. Trust him now for yourself. Trust him to help you. He said, I can't do that. No, you ain't going to do it by yourself because when you come together with him, he going to help you. Amen? With the Holy Spirit. May God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Wear your mask. Take the shots. Uh, do your separation. Amen? Worship God, whether you're at home or in the building. I tell people that if you want to come, we had a young lady came this Sunday. She had uh, her and her Two babies there. They came to be a part of the service. Said she'd be back next week. We are open for service. But that doesn't mean that you can't serve God where you are. Serve him in the presence of your neighbors. Serve him in your neighborhood. Serve him wherever you are. On your job. Make sure you serve God. Love you. Until next time, be safe. Amen. Uh, we're coming on in uh, next few minutes uh, on our Zoom call. We invite you to come and be a part of that. We get a chance to share with other people on that uh, Zoom and, and you can be a part of what's going on on that. We allow testimonies. We allow prayer. That we, you know, we've been discussed different types of things. But we love you. My Zoom number is 566-581-1939. Five six six five eight one nineteen thirty nine, and the password is the number zero. The letter M D R, the all capital letters, small letter W, lowercase W. That's zero. Capital letter M D R, lowercase W. See you in a few moments. Be blessed. Stay safe. Stay warm. And we know that we're praying for you. We love you. See you next time.